Uh, um, and okay. yeah, I probably think my edge guarding too is really my biggest question. I had a lot of trouble edge guarding okay. Mark consistently. All right. Well, if you're not edge guarding him, that's why he's not dying. <laughs> you yeah, know, because Falco sense. doesn't even have like really kill moves against Marth. He just kind of hits him and then edge guards him. So, mm -hmm. <clears throat> all right. Let's take a look then. Okay. So let's. See. Sorry, I think that starts a little late. No worries. Okay. Wait. So which one are you? Red shirt. Or uh, blue shirt? I am red shirt. Yeah. Red shirt. Nice. Okay. Oh, that was so good. <laughs> it's a, I think the only issue with Twitch is that it forces me to go back 10 seconds. So yeah. rewinding is going to be a little tricky, but we'll make it work. Okay, so that was really good. Okay, that was fine. Okay, I like this so far. That, yeah, oh my gosh. This might actually be a kill for you, if you're yeah. aware. The I side B, the side B works, takes quite a while. Like you just like if you are like you're in the middle of your wave dash here and you see the side B, you can just like avoid grabbing ledge here and then drop off double jump bear and Marth will be dead. And it's oh, like, action. Yeah, okay. sides like it's just like uh, a lot of the other characters can do stuff like that, especially like Fox or something. He can just like. He can just wait for Marth to um, side B and then jump out and shine sometimes. Like, side B actually takes, like, a pretty good amount of time. Um, mm -hmm. Marth can do some weird stuff to you, so, like, ideally you would grab the ledge every time here. Yeah. But just because he can sometimes do, like, the quick second side B and maybe catch you out of your double jump here and something could go wrong. But the grand majority of the time, like, he, he can't really react to you not grabbing edge here you know like if you just drop in back air here he's not yeah. going to be able to react to it uh from the marth end this just feels like a pretty hopeless position um albert in particular as is a falco who's i think really good at finding these back airs like pretty much anytime marth is off stage and you're going for ledge or anything just like have a part of your brain that's like hey is he gonna do a dumb side b because if he does i'll just kill him like at any point okay because that's definitely, like, a situation where you could have gotten the side B kill. Yeah. Um, let's see. Hmm. I'm confused about why I died there. Like, I know literally what happened, which is he mm -hmm. hit me, but I don't really know how this is supposed to work. Because what I try to do is obviously do the jump back to cover yeah, when yeah, do, like, yeah. a late but I don't know what else I'm supposed to do if they do this, I guess. Like, the right flow chart. Mm-hmm. Um, hmm. so, first, this is, so this is like a really tricky position, to be honest. Um, like, this is like a, it's like a very ambiguous uh, spot, kind of, mm -hmm. to do this double jump edge guard, so it'll take me a quick second to figure out what I think you should do here. Hmm. Ah, oh, that is a... It, it's a really weird, ambiguous situation where it was, like, a combination of, like, the exact timing that you did the double jump and, like, you could have double jumped back a little further. Yeah. Like, Falco can grab the ledge from, like, a little further away and sometimes that affects it. And, um... Mm -hmm. I also don't really like going for the double jump edge guard when I'm at super, super low percent because I can get gimped like this. I think a lot of times uh, at this percent, it's actually pretty strong to kind of sit on stage for a little longer. Or like sometimes I'll do like a double jump, like I'll do a double jump straight up here because then it kind of ends up in like a spot where like Marth can either up be a little later and give me the ledge grab and die, you know, and he'll die. Or if he up B's at this point, he'll hit me at the front of it, and then he's up a little too high, and I can just down smash him. Okay. That's kind of, like, specifically, like, below 10%, like, extremely low percent edge guard. Um, yeah. Also keep in mind, the Marth edge guard is really complex, and is, like, it's not solved yet, so any answers you get from me are like, eh, this is what I think is good right now, you know? Um, yeah. 
that's that's what I've been noticing. Where I've been getting a lot of conflicting answers on how to edge guard Marth in this position when he goes low. Mm -hmm. um, and it feels to me like in my head, like the jump back feels like the right thing to do. Um, but I, I just don't understand how it really interacts with his different timings that he can do for up B. Okay. Like, do you think it's safe even to go for that like double jump back a lot of the time? Yeah, so the double jump back is often... the So the double jump back, the specific place where it's like clearly the best option is when Marth is like riding the stage or he's too close to the stage to hit you. Um, so like let's say he... Let's see, I don't know. Like, maybe he's he's going low, and he's kind of doing, like, the stage ride type thing. Yes, okay. Or, like, he's in a position... Like, on Battlefield, you know, there's not really a stage to ride, but, like, basically, um, if, he's in a if he's in a position where he can tech the down smash, like, he's getting... He wants, like, where he's up being so that when he, at the peak of his up B, he's close enough where if you down smash him, he can tech... Yeah, that's kind of like a good metric of like, oh, it looks like he kind of is in that type of spot. Then I'll do the double jump back because the whole okay. point of the double jump back is like he's too close to clip you like this, where you can kind of just flip back and regrab. And it's basically that like, if he up bees at any point before the sweet spot, you know, he'll up B and you'll just fast fall and grab ledge before him. Mm -hmm. And then if he does it a little bit later, he's still going to miss you. So, like, you're out of his range this whole time, and then you, you get a ledge grab. And during yeah. this uh, uh, rising part of the double jump, you're invincible also from the ledge grab. So he, does, he just doesn't have an opportunity to hit you, and he also doesn't really have an opportunity to, you know, really get to ledge. And if he does happen to steal edge here, a lot of times you can just, like, up B right here, and he's kind of forced to get off ledge and let you grab it. Okay, that makes sense. So what I should be reacting to is like his horizontal distance from the ledge, basically. Like if he's it's, far yeah. enough from the ledge. So the, yeah, the backwards double jump is like entirely like a horizontal decision. Okay, and cool. um, that helps. One thing that Manga will do, and I really think this is good, but you know maybe not necessarily like the level one of this, is that like he'll he'll do this double jump back. But then he'll watch Marth's drift. And if Marth... Because the thing is, Marth can't, like, react to your double jump back and drift back. Mm -hmm. He doesn't have enough uh, acceleration out of his drift. That's kind of, like, why um, Marth is... Like, you know, Sheik has way better acceleration out of her uh, drift. And that's why when you're lasering Sheik as she's recovering, you know, you can't... You don't want to laser Sheik while she's recovering because she just gets closer and closer to the stage. Because okay. she just kind of, like, moves immediately towards you. But with Marth, you want to laser him, because every time you laser him, it resets his uh, acceleration. I don't know if it's technically the acceleration number or whatever with Sheik, whatever. But basically, Marth just accelerates pretty slowly out of the air. So, like, if Marth is in a position where he's not already drifting back, and he's kind of too close, he doesn't really have an opportunity to, like, suddenly drift back and then up B, you know? Yeah, no, that makes a lot of sense. But what Mango will do is sometimes Zane, you know, Zane is insane at this. He'll make it really ambiguous exactly what his drift is. And so Mango will do this double jump back. But then while he's in his double jump, he reacts to Zane holding back. And he'll just do double jump back side B. Oh, wait, that's weird for me to think about. So he'll he'll try to jump back and side B over the incoming up B? He, so he'll kind of do like a thing like this. Here, let me pull it up really quick. And there's definitely some VODs of him doing it, but I don't know where they are right now. Okay, so he'll do a thing where he gets he does this, and, you know, normally you do this kind of thing, right? Mm -hmm. uh, oops. Um, but then sometimes you do this double jump and you realize that right as you did this, Marth is like drifting back. And so what Vanga will do is he'll just do this. Because that oh. way, like, at the very least, you still get back. Or yeah. he'll sometimes he'll do this and sometimes it'll even like uh, kill Marth. Like, oh, that's like, actually crazy. So you kind of can do this. And then so it just kind of gives you like a little bit more like between this and then between like, oh, he stole the ledge I can do, you know, the up B. Or he, or he stole the ledge and I can do a side B and stuff like that. It just gives you like a little bit more to work with rather than like I'm fully committed to this side B and if he taps me, you know, or if he like... Because sometimes you do the double jump 
and then Marth somehow just insta fast falls and up Bs, and you don't really want to be stuck there. So the side B is just kind of like a quick escape, and sometimes, like I said, it can even kill Marth or get like a like a meteor, and then he has to recover again, and you're kind of safe there despite attempting this edge guard. Okay, that that I'll definitely look for that when I watch his stuff. Just another thing too is, is it common for Falcos to like? die here is, is it like an accepted risk if i'm doing this jump back that i can get hit and die if they like mix me up or, or should it always be reactable like reacting to their drift when they're low to um, where this should be like a safe thing to do you can die but pretty much every time i die for this i feel like it's a mistake on my part where i misjudge the situation somehow okay because normally when you end up in this spot where you want to do the double jump, you're like, eh, like, Marth is too close to the stage to drift back, and I have time before he can fast fall sweet spot. And, like, also keep in mind, fast fall perfect sweet spotting with Marth is insanely hard. <laughs> like, in, like, a dynamic situation, being able to fast fall and you're, like, almost off screen and you have to hit the perfect up B is really difficult. Mm -hmm. So, like, most of the time, they're not gonna, like, perfect, perfect sweet spot, but even if they do, like, if they're too close to the stage you have zero risk. And that's just something to keep in mind. But also, like, at zero, like I said, I usually do double jump straight up here. Yeah. And then I'm just kind of like, go ahead, hit me, and if not, I'll grab edge. Yeah, that make that does make sense. Yeah, because then this happens, but it, you, and, like, this matchup is so much about just, like, not getting killed in those situations, and it's... There's a lot of really complicated situations like basically the reason why this matchup is so hard in tournament is because or just hard in general currently is that like it's not solved and so like every p and by not solved i just mean like there's no like agreed upon answers for a lot of situations and then a lot of small differences in situations mean you have to do a different response and then if you do the wrong one marth kills you like not even the marth player marth the character will simply kill you at zero <laughs> and so it's kind of like that is what makes it difficult and so in terms of like getting better at the mashup and just like improving in general it's kind of just do your like rather than trying to play each situation perfectly it's usually better to just avoid getting hit by dumb stuff as much as you can and then like slowly adding on things that you know you know that you know you can beat okay that makes sense but i i would say that pretty much getting killed at zero out of this edge guard is almost never worth it yeah okay what is happening here all right new stock Okay, super good. I really like the way you played that that like neutral opening. Hmm. That was good. Your general approach in neutral seems super solid, which is really good. Well, I have a quick question. If you could go back one more ten seconds. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I, I do a down air into the corner here, and he just like hits the ground, and I, I get like an aerial that leads to like nothing basically. Um, on the right corner, it's gonna happen. So it's it's after this. Yeah, after. Okay. And this happens to me a lot. Like, that kind of situation where it's like I get, uh, I hit him in the air, and then, like, no, I get no punish off it, like, mm -hmm. effectively. Like, he, he goes to ledge here. And that was a little weird, because I know he, like, jumped and the dare hit him. Mm -hmm. But do you think that it's, like, my aerial usage in that situation is, like, what was bad? you think I should just nair there probably every time? Yeah, because if, uh, around, like, 70 to 100, maybe not 100, but, like, 85 is kind of, like, this nice sweet spot where, like, if Marth happens to dash in and you short hop Nair with forward momentum, you get a free down air. Like, the stock is just over. Mm -hmm. I'm sure you've seen Mango hit that. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. And so the Nair here is really good. Um, here's what Zane always tells me about this position. He says, if you're going to approach in this position, it should always be a Nair. And then if you're going to prevent Marth from dashing, because Marth loves to dash out of the corner... Yeah. Then you do a dare in place to beat Dash out of the corner. Okay. That is like basically like what Zane tells everyone to do, and he says that is the hardest to deal with for him. And so that's why the goal when Marth is in the corner is you kind of are supposed to just hold him in the corner for a little bit and then try to see what he does and like like laser dash dance, laser dash dance, laser, laser dash dance, you know, and kind of look to see what he's gonna do. And if it feels like he's kind of 
you know, just general, like, melee neutral game type stuff. Like, if it feels like he's kind of going to dash out, then you can just do a down air in place. And then if he starts doing this, like, nair, dash dance, nair, dash dance, nair, then you do, like, a laser, and then you just nair him into the corner and get, like, a kill out of it. Yeah. Okay. But stuff like this will happen, and, like, that's not your fault. Like, that's just... That's that's okay. You the, the like you have to keep in mind you also got Marth to the ledge here, which is a win. Cause Marth off the ledge is horrible. Yeah, I, I understand that he's bad, but I feel like what happens to me a lot in fact the, the way I lost to Calvar at this tournament was on the on the last stock of like the last game. He can't ledge for like thirty five seconds and then just like got up and did an option out of the corner and I just like lost. And I feel like Maybe not to that extreme, but that's what happens to me when Mark was on the ledge, where it's like they wait for a few seconds, and I'm trying to hold with, like, a laser or something, and then they wait long enough that, like, they just come up, and then they get me, or I try to hit, I try to do something like a laser F-tilt, or, like, some kind of safe feeling downer when they're in the corner, and they get around it, and they just kill me. Like, how do you think that you should approach Marth when he's getting off the ledge? Or, oh, like, yeah, contain yeah. Marth, I Okay, guess. so every single time he does his double jump to get... To, like every time he acts like he might ledge dash or something like that i i fire a laser so that it, it hits him exactly like as he gets up onto stage and his invincibility kind of ends yeah and then i sort of adjust it based on certain things that the marth in particular is doing but at the same time i have kind of like a flow chart there so okay so if marth does a high fare then the laser will hit him when he's still in the air. Uh, and this is like a really common fare here, is they jump up and they fare, the laser cancels the fare, and then all you have to do is dash attack. Mm -hmm. after, oh, after wow, the laser. Okay. If they are still in the air. So dash attack is one of Falco's best kill moves on Marth. <laughs> and I know that sounds weird, but it really is, because from like 70 to you know around 100 again, dash attack into down air, just true combos Marth. Uh, near okay. the edge if he di's in and m most people when they're getting off the edge are not going to be holding out <laughs> and even if he does he'll end up in a pretty bad edge guard position so anytime you can catch marth in the corner in the air dash attack is actually insanely insanely good like it's and really is that like a combo like a laser dash attack like combo you're laser to dash is it like... yes laser dash attack down air is a true combo okay like, it literally combos. They cannot get out. It works on Zane every time. <laughs> if yeah. it hits. If wow. It, it, <laughs> I've never even done that. Because it's a true combo. <laughs> you know, if it hits, it, if, it's a, if it's a combo and it hits, it doesn't matter who they are. They can't get out of it, you know? Yeah. No, you're right. There are I'll, I'll some it. weird spots where he might have, like, a few frames. Like, it is a pretty tight combo. You might have to, like, practice the timing a little bit. But generally, you will get a free kill out of it. Um, okay. Okay, so that's, like, when he's in the air. Like, if you laser him and he's stuck in the air, you Wait, can I'm just... I'm sorry, not to cut you off from continuing, no, but real quick, it. just so I know. What it. is the spacing that you want to be in to, to do that, to get that combo? Is you it, like, where be... my Falco is on the screen? No, you're too close. Um, okay. I'll pull it up. Good question, good question. Oops. Instantly going to unranked. <laughs> so, if Marth is on this edge over here, whatever, I would usually want to be about here. So, okay. here's the thing, is um, Marth has two different fares off the ledge. He has the high one, where he kind of just goes like this. And then he has this other one, where he kind of goes like, like the late one. So, like, yeah. here, I can go Marth and show you really quick. And so he has this one. Oops. That one, which is really common. You've seen it, like, a million times. This one. Mm -hmm. This is the one that dies to laser dash attack, because look how long it takes him to land. You know? Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. So when he does this, just laser dash attack, he's holding in on the fair. He'll go straight up to about here, and you can just full hop down here, and he's dead. Mm -hmm. um the second one is kadoran likes to do this one a lot where he does kind of like he kind of slips on and does like a late fare and this one is actually invincible until marth hits the ground if they do it frame perfect it's like that one and that one actually hits here so like as falco i'm kind of playing this game where i'm kind of like any option that marth has except for that super brutal fare will 
lose to like this spacing. And then if Marth does that exact late fair, I want to be more like here. And so okay. I kind of play like in this range. And if it seems like the Marth, like could, for instance, Kadoran, he literally always does that late fair. So versus him, I just stay a little bit further back and then I'll, and then I can just punish that. So my main punish that I'm looking for is um, laser grab after the dash attack. Like if I'm not, if I'm not gonna get a dash attack, I look for laser grab. And a lot of times I'll just do laser and then the Marth will shield and then I'll just laser grab and I forward throw. And then sometimes up throw is good. I'm kind of still testing it. Um, but the safe option there is just forward throw. And then you get like another edge guard where you can potentially get back airs and stuff like that. Um, so then the other option I'll do is I'll just do laser and then I do this because a lot of times after I do like laser grab, laser grab like five times, then the Marth will do, you know, this. And so yeah. I'll do like laser and I just dash dance and then I'll get a combo or a forward smash or whatever if they roll. Mm -hmm. and, and is that range good for covering their ledge dash options too or can they still do... They can't do um, anything. I have not encountered a single option that any Marth does that beats this range of laser. Okay. Like that at all. Sense. Like a single thing. <laughs> yeah. The other thing is that they sometimes, some Marths will think they're clever and they'll beat the the laser grab with countering the laser, but this is horrible because if you just dash dance, you get the freest punish ever on the counter. Yeah. And okay, so I, cool. I just kind of mix up those things, and it feels like a 70-30 or 80-20 situation. Like, it feels like a massive advantage for me. Yeah. Makes sense. And that's why putting Marth to the ledge is so good. And yeah, so you're doing all this stuff, but you what you should really be doing is just standing here, and every time he pops his head up, it's like a whack-a-mole. Every time he pops his head up, you're like, laser. And he's like, okay, yeah. now, laser. And it just makes it... Like, I don't know if you've played Marth before. I would suggest, actually, just grab a friend who plays Falco and have them sit here and laser you getting up, and you will understand pain. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I should do that, actually. Like, you cause... will be like, wait a minute. <laughs> like, there's <laughs> literally... Like, it feels horrible like it feels <laughs> it feels horrible as Marth. like i've been in that spot a lot of times and it just feels like there's no way up at all mm -hmm. that makes sense for me what i've been doing a lot and what we'll keep seeing is like i either try to like and this is probably really stupid but i like try to read them like ledge dashing or doing something like that and try to dare or back air in place uh, yeah, or no, I just that's, forfeit that's it and play from yeah. center. Yeah, I should definitely not do that. <laughs> it's because they they can do all kinds of mix ups on that, and some of those mix ups will end with you dying. So yeah, the back air works really well there against Marths who are bad because they will do vulnerable ledge dashes. But the Marths who are really good, their ledge dashes won't get hit. Like Marth can ledge dash shield, you know, and a lot of times they'll sometimes they'll do like. Like, if you're trying to read the back air, Marth will just double jump, land, up tilt, and you'll just die. Yep. That <laughs> so, happens to me. Yeah, I mean, yeah, I'm sure that happens to you all the time. <laughs> I don't need to tell you, but... Um, <laughs> yeah, so that is yep. that is the thing. Okay. Cool. This is good. Turn it winner here. Right here, when Marth can double jump to the ledge, the best thing is usually backwards hop to ledge. Uh... Does that make sense here? Yes. Yeah, that and does make sense. You can if you if you have a read on them or you're feeling confident, you can actually just hop back into shine back air here. Fox okay. actually cuz Fox does this edge guard a lot where he does turn the winner, turn winner or not turn winner, uh, Marth killer. He does Marth killer and then he'll do short hop off shine here. And Falco can do something similar with just short hop off shine bear. Uh but it's kind of like a preference thing. I'm not really sure exactly when it's super optimal or perfect, but he can't react to you going for that compared to you just short hopping to ledge. And if you short hop to ledge here, he has kind of like this awkward position uh, with his where he doesn't really get the edge grab and stuff like that. If he does the preemptive fair from there when he's coming out of his short hop, will that uh, will that beat that jump back to ledge, or should I be spaced or like from that spacing? Would I be able to just safely jump back and grab ledge without getting forward aired? Um, if you time it right, you should be able to grab the edge without getting forward aired. But keep in mind that that forward air is incredibly risky for him because he can just die. Yeah. He doesn't want to do that fair. Like, that fair feels really committal and bad for Marth. So, like, especially if, you know, you're waiting sometimes and then you just short hop. 
Like, because you don't have to short hop back, you know. You can short hop up and still grab edge. So oh, sometimes right. you can just short hop up, he'll whiff his fair, and you just back air him and he's dead, you know? Yeah, that makes sense. Oof, that was so scary. <laughs> On that nair, wow. Yeah. I actually would have thought you'd get hit by that. Wow, that was that was good. <laughs> you like cross up for it, man. That was clever. Mm. That's bad too. Yeah, right? yeah. No, you, so you know often. that's bad. Yeah. But I don't know what else to do. I think because I I always get stuck above Marth, and then I don't know how to get down. And then they just like eventually get an up air when I try to fall into it with an aerial. Right. Um. Okay. So. Marth actually struggles a bit with Falco short hopping at him off the side platform. Not like, not like, he doesn't like big struggle or anything, but like, it's obviously a lot harder to deal with Falco coming off the side plat than the top plat. Mm -hmm. So, it, well, okay. The top plat is weird because you don't have a way down except to go to the side plat. Uh, but from the side plat, you can go to the top plat if you need to. <laughs> It's like the top plat is the safest place, but you you can't really do a lot there, except go to the side plat. Uh, and the side plat, you can get down, but it's a little bit less safe than the top plat. And that's just kind of the balance there. Uh, okay. If you... So this is... Falco on the platforms is actually really, really, really strong against Marth. Like, Marth struggles at dealing with Falco on the platforms way more than you would initially think. And this is something I've actually been working on a lot, and I get a lot of openings out of it and a lot of stuff against Marth because of it. The plat a lot of because a lot of times Falcos will just kind of play against Marth like it's FD. It's like FD and then also Marth has platforms. And it's like, dude, you know, like and it's like you can use the platforms too. The critical thing is to just angle your shield down when you're on the side plat or just on all, any of the platforms. Um I'll do a thing a lot where I just angle, I angle my uh, shield down, and then I just short hop, and then you kind of have a lot of interesting mix-ups out of that position. I'll do like short hop, land, shield again, and stuff like that. Um, if you do it on the side plat, Marth doesn't have any options that actually beat it. Uh, like a really common bait I get, and I feel really stupid for hitting this. Or I don't. I feel like they're really stupid for me hitting this every time. But like. A lot of times I can just sit on the side plat and I'll do dash dance shield and then the Marth thinks I'm going to dash dance shield drop laser so they nair in and if you just shield the Marth nairing in you get a shield drop down air punish. Same okay. thing if they do short hop fair or up air or any of that. And then you also have the mix up off the side plat where it's like so if you're doing a lot of shielding on these platforms side plat or top plat they don't really want to do a lot of full hop aerials. So, because I get, even off the top plat, I'll get a lot of stuff where I'm on the top plat, I'm running around, I shield, Marth jumps up and does a full hop fair, and I just shield drop back air or shield drop shine, and I have my own opening off of that. Or, Marth will full hop aerial, and I short hop, dodge the aerial, and then fall and hit him. This happens a lot, and it's really hard for Marth to kind of, like, reach up here. He doesn't, he yeah. doesn't like it as much as you would think. It, because... What your experience most likely is, is every time you're on the platforms, Marth literally just starts running around, jumping, and spamming C-Stick. And true. it always hits you. Yeah. <laughs> and I know because that happened to me for, like, a long time <laughs> as Falco. <laughs> but basically, he doesn't really have good value for full hop chasing you. And so he has to do short hop aerials. And his short hop aerials have a kind of, like, timing to them. And he can't approach you because of your shield drop stuff. So getting off the side platform is really not that bad. And even if you're dash dancing here, sometimes he'll do like a nair in center and you can just short hop off and catch the landing. Okay. Uh, so I wish I had sense. like a VOD kind of for this, but it's once you just start getting comfortable with holding shield angled down on the side plat and then on the top plat, you'll notice that so often they just jump into you and hit you and they hit your shield and you just hit them like i've gotten an insane number of free openings off of this i'll try that out okay so this works out for you but this is something that i think is a little scary so like when you're kind of getting marth into this position usually the best option is not to 
Because, you know, you don't want to be next to next to or on top of Marth in the air because of his forward aid. So a lot of times in this position, if you jump up like this, the best option is just to go through the platform and shark him from down here. Oh, yeah, that makes sense. Because yeah. otherwise you end up in this spot where, like, he could have just fared you out of that. And then, like, yeah, being in this type of angle is way better because you get, like, these sort of falling... Like, he... He struggles to get down. He definitely doesn't struggle on Falco falling on him in the air because he can just forward air. Mm -hmm. That dare was probably not good. Yeah, the dare was kind of bad here too. Um, I really like out of like this position. I really like just full hopping to the top flat. I'll like shoot one laser and then full hop up here. Um, mostly just because when you're in the corner, Marth, and it's not that I want to do I want you to do that every time. You can also sometimes just like laser once, go to the side plat, and do that shield thing, and he yeah. doesn't really have like a way in. Uh, the issue is like a lot of times. First of all, he has a lot of dash back space here, so approaching aerial out of the corner is usually pretty bad. They're gonna expect it really often. Uh, and the other thing is a lot of times approaching aerial out of the corner is bad because Marth will do things like just stand here and take laser forward smash and stuff like that. Yeah. So when, when you're in the corner, just know that the Marth is way more likely to be throwing out moves and also dashing back. Both of those things beat approaching. So um, when you go to the side plat, you go to the top plat from that position. Is, is the goal there just to like do something that will make Marth have to respect it and like back up? Or yeah, I'll just, like I'll, I'll just do stuff where I like laser and I full hop up this way and then Marth will kind of go into the corner and then I'll either land here and come down here or I'll just like fast fall here and like laser and then I have center and he's in the corner. So the end goal generally is to just get center back? Like, yeah. like not even prioritize? Because I think I try to hit him too much. In yeah, those there's positions. no reason to fight Marth when you're in the corner. Like as, as like you should be interacting as little as possible because he just has like this really stupid like spam c stick forward advantage type thing yeah okay gotcha that helps i just see this matchup very very positionally where like in terms of corners where when marth is in the corner i hold space when marth is not in the corner and we're both kind of in the center, I don't care about space. In the sense that, like, you know, you have to be ready to retreat. Sometimes you have to be ready to cross up. It, like, it's... A lot of people make the mistake of, like, Marth's here and Falco's here, and you're holding Marth in the corner. And, oops. And then Marth will break out of the corner, so Marth's here. And then you're here. But then people will continue holding space here while Marth is here. And what all that does is make you predictable. Because holding space doesn't matter when Marth isn't cornered anymore. Yeah, that happens to me all the time. That's why I, I get hit when I'm trying to laser in that position, for sure. So a lot of times, it's like you can hold Marth in the corner, but if he escapes the corner, this whole space just needs to be, like, general option mix-up territory. And yeah. that worked out for you a little earlier, where you jumped past him, and then you forward smashed. Mm -hmm. And that's just kind of the thing, is just, like, the matchup is very, like, street fightery where it's like i keep him in front of me while he's in the corner but then if, if it breaks out and it's more in center it doesn't really matter you're just kind of crossing up and doing all kinds of stuff here and then as soon as marth has you in the corner you also don't really want to interact because then it's marth's turn to kind of wall here and that's why i usually just try to like escape vertically or go to the ledge and ledge dash so is interacting in center kind of the same idea as when you're like uh, just trying to get him to keep backing up, basically. It's like from, if we're both in a center position, am I just trying to, like, force out an aerial or, like, get him to dash back so I can take center? Just yeah. like I kind of would if I was trying to, like, push him further into the corner? Yes, but you have to keep in mind that there's two corners. <laughs> like, this is, this is, like, the hardest mental thing. It's like, sometimes Marth will be over here, and then when he breaks out to here and you're here sometimes you'll like dare here or jump here and marth will cross you up and then you have to laser to push him into this corner oh okay so it's just very important not to be like like you're here and marth is here you know it's important not to be like i'm here and so i need to push marth to this corner 
it's instead being like, oh, I can just cross up, and now Marth is in this corner. Yeah. And that but is, like, a there. really difficult concept, because it's really complicated to kind of deal with in-game in all these dynamic situations. But it's really important to understand, because I see that happen to so many Falcos, including myself, and, like, my VODs is, like, I'll become, like, hyper-fixated on, like, one corner, or, like... I am on the right and Marth is on the left and I play exclusively facing to the left, you know, and it just doesn't really make sense. Yeah. And a lot of say that that does make sense. And a lot of times using the platforms can allow you to do that. Like a lot of times you'll go up to like, let's say I'm here and Marth is here and I full hop up to the platform. Marth is afraid of me dropping on him with an aerial. So he usually dashes here. And then when I drop with a laser, I've cornered him. Mm-hmm. So it's kind of like this like wrestling match of getting to the corner, but just don't become too fixated on like one particular corner. Yeah. Okay. Empty hop in didn't make a lot of sense there, but like if you had just nared here, it would have been totally totally fine. <laughs> like right here. Like if you had just nared there, obviously you would have Yeah, just I think I was I think I was maybe trying to late nair or something, but you're right. Yeah, you caught him out of the air, so there's no reason to yeah. late nair. Late Nair doesn't really have usage against Marth. Mm-hmm. I'm sure there's something somewhere. Wait, how do you get hit out of this? What did you do? Mm, yeah, whatever. <laughs> he just kind of like wave dashed and picked a direction. <laughs> and sometimes that'll happen. Yeah, like right here, you can sh- you can just shine back into this. Or probably you can just back there, but I I usually shine back there. Like right here. When he does this, you can just shine back there before he can drop to grab ledge. Do you think I grabbed ledge too early is like what the problem was? Or I shouldn't have even grabbed ledge. I should just have like jumped off shine back there. No, you did everything right. I'm saying from right here. You can shine back there right here. Oh, and he won't snap to the ledge. I can, I can shine back. No, his from, ledge from grab, that. his ledge grab is really good, like above him, kind of. But he can't grab it from this height. Like he takes a little bit to actually like accelerate out of his fall here. And like sometimes, you know, you can even get him here after he's dropped past you. Wow. Okay, I didn't know that. <laughs> a lot of times, I actually they'll hold forward from the side B, and so when I shine, they actually get stage spiked here and die. <laughs> It's pre- it's really common. I'm just saying, because <laughs> they they just held forward on the side. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. But see how Marth is in this nice toasty position where he's just like, oh man, I'm so comfy here, like. I love just throwing out moves in the corner because you're here in the corner. He's just going to like chuck out moves like this. Yeah. And that's why a lot of times I'll just leave because <laughs> I, I just sense. don't like that position. So I'm just like, nah, I'm just going to leave. And then, so it's just, this mashup is just so interesting because look at this. It's like, man, Falco's in a really rough spot, man. Falco's in a super, super rough spot. Like right here. You're like, Oh no, Falco's in a horrible position. And then you end up right here, and you're like, wait a second, I'm winning. Like, he's getting obliterated. Like, I'm the best player of all time. And that's why the positioning in this matchup is so important. And it's so important that, like, when you are in a negative position, you don't need to fight. You just need to slip out and so that he's cornered. Because now, he's just he's just in a horrible spot, right? His shielding away from you, your shield pressuring him, he's in the corner. Everything just suddenly goes bad for him. You think of where it fell apart is where I did that down air back onto his shield, um, where I crossed him up and I hit the shine on his shield and then I down aired out of it. Mm, here? Yeah, like, do you think that's where things kind of went wrong for me? No, no, you were, this pressure? was still fine. You could have obviously okay. punished his roll here, because Marth's roll oh. is really slow. Yeah. Like, right here. You could have just, you know, wave dash out and shine this or up tilt it or something. Whatever. There's, the, there's like, ways you could have punished it. But, like, you didn't. That's okay. You still have the good positioning. Like, the point of this matchup is just to have the good positioning. That's it. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, this is a little crazy. Uh, but you, you manage to keep it going. And you get this, which is good. Right here, drop double jump back here. Or down here. You can actually drop double jump down here this and he's just dead. 
He's just yeah. completely dead there. Such a bad side B from him. Oh, wait. This one's sick. This is a perfect example of this other concept. So assuming you don't do um, the, the back air here to kill him, this is a great spot to do the backwards double jump. Because look how close to the stage he is. Yep. That makes he's like right under it. Yeah, and so you would have just re-grabbed here and he would have died. So right here, there's there's some interesting stuff you can do out of this position. I know it's really tempting to hit Marth here, um, but this is like a guaranteed tech chase, you know? Mm -hmm. Like, you can just, like, jump up and, like, shine here and just react to anything, pretty much. There's no reason to, like, go for a read, really. Just a super small thing. Yeah, that would help, though. Okay, yeah, remember, he's on the ledge. You need to be lasering. It, it needs to be, like, an automatic thing. Like, uh... Like, you know, like, when you shine a fox and they pop up right here, and you're just like, oh, yeah, and you just run, full <laughs> hop down here, and you, there's, like, literally one brain cell doing all of that? Mm -hmm. That is, like, what you want when Marth goes to the edge. Right here, you just, like, drop laser, drop, like, just just drop and laser. Like, it, it's just solved like that? Like, I should just yeah, do it there, Yeah, there time. is literally no other option you should ever do. Ever. <laughs> yeah. There is, like, nothing that you should ever do there. I should. You this think that is a laser was not good, the one that got power shielded? Because he just, like, kind of crouched and was waiting for me here, and then that's what turned the situation around for me. Yeah, when you do an approaching laser onto Marth, you should always shoot a high laser. The reason is that um, if you hit the top of Marth's shield with the laser, there are two, there are a couple things that can happen here. The first is if you hit the, if you hit the very top of his shield with the correct laser, there's like a there's like three different frames of short hop laser. Uh, I don't remember what they are. Avery or uh, Ginger knows them. But um, there's like a few frames of short hop laser that he can't power shield at all. Because they hit the very tippy top of his shield. Um, so there's a chance of that happening. There's also a chance of the laser just going over his head. In which case, you know, he can't power shield it. So you still get the shield pressure. Or there's the case where, and this actually happens with me a lot, is I'll shoot the laser, it hits kind of the top of his shield, like right here, it gets power shielded, but actually Falco's landing animation will duck that laser. Okay. And so if you approaching, so like, if you are approaching lasering Marth, almost every single time you should be shooting a high laser. Okay. Uh, and it, when good players do this laser, because I only do this approaching laser because I'm just trying to, like, replicate when I see Mango do, like... Because I see him do that high laser, too. I thought it was just to go under the power shield. I didn't even know about the... Uh, he couldn't power shield at that height. But, like, he'll do, like, approaching laser, like, shine, or at least I'll see that happen sometimes. Yeah. Um, and that's just to, like, kind of mindlessly replicate him doing that. But I don't actually think I understand why you would want to do this, like, approaching laser in. Like, is that exclusively to beat if they're dashing back, or is that to, like, confirm a laser yeah. shine on shield? It's because if they dash away and you hit the laser, you're at a massive advantage because their shield... Even if they power shield, they're... Like, assuming you... Assuming the laser will not hit you, okay? And even if it does hit you, when they're dashing back, it doesn't matter. You're still in a good position. Mm -hmm. Because they're facing away from you and they're shielding. So what are they going to do? Marth can either, you know, back her out of shield, which is not that good... Like, down or out of shield, I guess. They're not really going to do those in that spot. They usually just wave dash out of shield. And, you know, are they going to wave dash into you and die? Or are they going to wave dash away and give you good positioning? That's kind of like their options out of dash back power shield. And so it, it for sure 100% beats dash back power shield, which Marths really love to do. The other thing that Marth a lot of times will attempt to do here is he'll do dash in power shield slash crouch power shield. And the, the thing that Marths want here more than anything in the world is they want you to approaching laser and then do power shield grab. Yeah. They want a power shield, it hits you, and they get a true combo into grab. And so that is what this high laser beats. Because if you high laser and it goes over your head and you shine and Marth grabs, it's a free shine every time. Okay. So that makes this, it... Hmm? I was just going to say, it just feels like such a... 
like now that I'm watching it back and thinking about it, it feels like such a risky thing to do to do that like high laser in because just because of the fact that like because if they just mash A here, right? Like if they just like try to shield grab, isn't that just gonna get me when I'm coming in with a laser? Or like not like after the laser's fired, like it hits their shield. Like I feel like a lot of the time, like I'll get the laser shine on shield and then I'll just like get grab anyway after. Oh, oh yeah. So what I do for that, and I do this pressure against a lot of characters, is I do shine, late double shine, wave dash through. Okay. So I'll do I'll do this pressure. Oh wait, I'm gonna do twenty x, or I'm gonna do uncle punch really quick. I know somebody will get mad at me for using the net play window, but whatever. Okay. <laughs> Um, okay, one second, let me turn off the music. Don't want that. Okay. Uh, attack on shield. So the issue you're talking about is basically that if I short hop out of my shine here, he just grabs me. Yeah. So there's a few, there's a few ways you can beat this. Uh, one is to full hop. Full hopping is always safe against any character's shield grab after the shine. Obviously, that doesn't give you a great pressure. So my favorite is to do this, because if he, so I'll do that. And so watch, if he does nothing, I just get this. And that's intentionally a few frames late, just so if they like mash a, like the yep. seal grab will start. Yeah, because okay. if you do this, if you do this, sometimes they'll be a little late on their grab and they just won't get it. And then they'll hit you on like the wave dash or something. But if you do, if you do this, then so what that does is it's like you hit you hit this and then you do this high high laser or sometimes you do it a little bit lower like that um and then you're in this position where he has a few options if his if his option was power shield grab then he loses to that and if his option is power sh and if his option is shield the laser wait for the shine and then grab it loses to that you know yeah. And it's like, so, if even if, if I do, you know, you can even do stuff like, oh, one sec, I'm bad at this, that, and you can a lot of times get away from stuff. Well, that's insane. <laughs> okay, w would you want to do that? Would that be, like, a legitimate option to do, like, shine, turn around, wave dash away? Yeah, I actually do this. I, I've actually been implementing this against, like, Falcon and Fox and stuff a bit, because this actually beats Fox uh, shine out of shield. And would you only do that if they're reading you doing the double shine anyway to delay their shine on a shield and then you get away from it? Is that like the idea? Yeah. But the thing is, I'm telling you right now, there is there is like very few Marths in this world who will not either try to power shield grab like the first shine, like they're going to grab, you know, before the first shine, like after the laser. Or they're gonna grab after the second shine. If you find a Marth that just holds shield through that whole thing, then you know they're just gonna get they're just gonna get a really tiny shield and get shield poked very soon. Yeah. Or just get shine grabbed or something. That makes sense. Okay, cool. I didn't realize that that was the intentional thing is to like wait a few frames between the first and second shine. Mm -hmm. That's really good. And, like, yeah, so it just puts Marth in this situation where it's, like, if he had any form of grab planned at all, he will get hit. Like, he'll get hit if he tries to grab, you know, after the laser or after the shine. And if Marth is reading that you are going to do laser in double shine, and he's also SDIing the shine back so that you can't go through him on the second one, then he's just outplaying you, you know? Like yeah, there's just sure. there's just mix ups there that you can play. But that beats like every form of obvious grab, and I do that to Marth's like all day. <laughs> yeah. Cool. Okay. Oof, yeah, you really see this is something, so the th the problem with nairing in here, I know it's juicy, is that, like, he can dash out. Like, that's why the primary threat here is, like, laser, laser, laser. Are you going to dash out? Down air. And then if he doesn't dash out and you down air, he's still trapped in the corner. 
But if you read that he's jumping and you go for the nair and he does dash out, you're in a horrible position all of a sudden, like this. Okay. Yeah. So you just I, have to my... be really careful not to get like positionally reversal there. Okay. So just to clarify, my, the way I was looking at it before is that when Mars in the corner, I want to be shooting. I, I want to catch him short hopping and nair him. That's always like my primary thing that I want to do. Mm -hmm. Instead of doing that, I should just be looking to contain him with like the lasers and down air. And then after a second, when like he's forced to short hop, is when I should go for the nair. Or should, is it better? Just, yeah, pretty like, much. With that I just kind of tell myself I'm just gonna keep him there as long as possible. It's kind of like um, I don't know if you're playing. Let me think of a character. I don't know. It's kind of like when you're playing against like Peach, and she's kind of on the ledge. It's like your goal is not to like push into the corner and kill Peach. It's just to like continue playing the game for a while with Peach in the corner. Because it's, okay. it's not like a situation where you're like, he's in the corner. If I don't punish this, I'm failing, you know? It's like mm -hmm. he's in the corner, so he's weaker than me right now, you know? Like, okay. and then just play normal neutral from there, kind of, where they're in like a... Yeah, like I just, I just play normal neutral right there, to be honest. Yeah. Um, oh, how does them going to side plat affect that though because what happens a lot is it's like i'll get marth in the corner and then they just like jump up to side plat and like wave land down mm -hmm. and now it feels like it feels to me like my pressure's over at that point like does that just mean i've failed to contain them or is it like yeah that's normal that's kind of what the lasers can do is like the lasers can catch like if you're doing the high laser like, like, relatively high lasers, they can catch Marth trying to full hop to the side plat, and it kind of puts him in, like, an awkward position. Um, and then also, if he decides to full hop up, sometimes I can just, like, nair him out of his wave land and stuff like that. Um, yeah. It's not, like... It's just full hop... Like, Marth... Marth is scary once he's already established on the side plat, but he doesn't have, like, an instant way to be on the side plat. So if he full hops to get to the side plat, like, think about, like, a fox doing full hop waveland down on the side plat. You can just hit him. Like, it is vulnerable. It yeah. does have a lot of frames of vulnerability to full hop waveland. And that's can you do that on reaction though? Because when I do that to foxes, that's like a read on them jumping the side plat. Like, can you reactively jump up there and shine them while they're like, you know, doing that like a uh, full hop wave land onto the platform? Um, I mean, first of all, it probably depends on which which platform. Um, okay, but like, I'm telling you, pick Marth. Play against a Falco and try to get out of the corner. <laughs> okay. Yeah, I, I think promise. I'm just is stronger like you're just is. imagining him as like, dude, I, he's in the corner and he just full hop wavelands to the side plat and he's invincible. And then you do it as Marth and you're like, I'm so exposed. Like, <laughs> <laughs> like it doesn't feel like like what it feels like as Marth is I'm gonna full hop waveland. Falco will just back air me and then I'll die. <laughs> Oh, is that what you try to do a lot of the time? Is is like back air them when they when they at like a higher percent when they try to wave land at the side plat? I'll kind of just do whatever. I mean, I think back air there is pretty good. It just it's like Marth can full hop to get out of. Basically, him being in the corner doesn't mean that you have a one hundred zero on him. It, you have like an eighty twenty. Like mix ups will still be played. But his mix-ups are all way scarier to play than any of yours. Yeah, I, I think I just don't know the way, and I guess this is through my own research too, I can get better at this, just like the, the right way to fight all of them, I guess. Like I understand what to do if he short hops, and I understand what, or not if he, like if I predict him doing a short hop, and I understand what to do if I predict him running out, but it's always the side plat that gives me specifically a lot of trouble for Mark's getting out. Like, I was playing yesterday with the Martha on Netplay just for a while, and every time it would just, like, short hop to side platform, and it's like, I would try to read that with, like, shine, trying to shine it preemptively, mm -hmm. um, but it feels like if they didn't do it, I would be in such a bad spot after making that kind of read. Like, it feels like it was very committal for me to read something for them that feels like, or at least to me, felt like their safest thing to go for. Mm-hmm. 
So I don't, I, I just, I, I, like, what would you do specifically, I guess, if, if you were in the corner and you know that a Marth is going to try to wave land to side plat? I would um, probably just back air him, yeah. Okay, and do you, is, is it, like, risky to do, because it always feels to me like, if I don't do that, like, versus Foxes especially, it's like, they'll wait for me to do that kind of shine, and then they'll up air me or something. Like, they'll... Uh, like read me doing that and wait for me to do it and punish me for it. I um, a lot of times I'll it's hard to describe because I'll do like let me let me pull up. This is a very legitimate question. I'm not trying to seem like I'm like hand waving it or anything like that. Um, it's kind of just like so I'll be pressuring Marth in the corner. Oops, we got a platform stage. So, like, if Marth... Oops, I pressed down on the D-pad. I'm like, there we go, he's here. I'm like, wait a minute. Okay. So, like, if I'm here and I'm kind of pressuring Marth, Marth is kind of worried about me narrowing in at any point. So if he just goes like this, like, he could just easily get narrowed and killed out of that. He doesn't... Yeah. Like, it's not like this free getaway move. And then, so if I'm here and I'm kind of, like, I'll pressure with, like, laser and I'll do, like, these back air pressures a lot, like this... Like, I'll kind of get in here, and, like, a lot of times I'll hit this, and then instead of hitting the nair, I'll do this, and he'll nair, and I'll back air it. So I'm kind of, okay. like, pressuring and while he does it, and then, like, if he is, like, here, and he just goes like this or something, like, and I'm doing this pressure, he's just in a position where he can just, he can just get hit by stuff. Like, I, it's, like, uh, let me, let me just go to, um... Let, oh, wait, this is... I think you're in vanilla. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay, let me just pull up and make like a quick replay or something. And I'm down to go a couple minutes over the hour because I want to kind of test this too a little bit. Awesome, I appreciate that. Um, okay, so... So let's say, you know, Marth is here and he just got up from the ledge. And then uh, I'll save it and let's put Marth at like a hundred, something like that. And then he's going to do, let's see, save and then record. So I'll do this and I'll do that. And then I'll, okay, I'm gonna do this and then I'll do this and shield. Okay, so I'll do this and then, oops. Or how about this and then that? How's that? Okay. Yeah, that looks good. That looks okay. good. So then let's do playback, and then I'll do for me. So I'm kind of doing this, and then I'm I'm kind of like pressuring in right here. So if Marth is gonna kind of go for something like this, he, oh, <laughs> like if if he's gonna do, wow, I keep messing him up with the laser. No, yeah. dude, I don't want to change the position. All right. I hate my D-pad actually. <laughs> Like, my D-pad is, like, uh, slightly... Oh, there we go. Okay, perfect. What in the world? These always confuse me whenever I try to do this, too. Yeah, so you can't... Like, so what you're saying is, like, you can't just, like, jump up to read it, right? Yeah, that's how I feel. But if I'm here... Oh, darn it. <laughs> I hate these replays. <laughs> but if I'm here and he does that, like, he... That hit him before he shielded. So if... So if I'm here, I'm doing this, you know, and he goes up, like, he's not in a position where he's just, like, safe, you know? Yeah. Like, especially if I'm doing kind of like this, and I'm kind of, like, moving in and kind of pressuring him as much as I can, he's not going to be in a, like, he can get out, right? But he's not yeah. in a position where he's going to be super safe. And you can obviously hit him with, like, up air stuff, too, right there. Yeah, that's what happens a lot is I end up being under him after he's already gone to the side platform yeah. and I try to up air or something. Okay, so um, if you end up like this and he gets up here, I just I just give up. That's the end of the pressure. It's kind okay. of like if I'm doing if I'm doing this and then he just like roll like if I do this and you know he rolls past me, that's the end of the pressure. Okay. Yeah, so so really the the issue here that I'm having is like how I'm Representing Nair. Like, but, Nair is, is what I probably should do, right? Is, like, like, just if I easily do anything jumping? Yeah, so, like, look at this. If he does this and he's and he's gonna jump, he can get caught right here, like, by the laser in different situations. Like that. 
Yeah. So, like, and I'm going to be shooting this kind of in different spots. So he doesn't have... He doesn't... Like, the, the important thing is he just doesn't have, like, a guarantee. And sometimes I'll even, like, go up to the side flat here. And I'm kind of... It's just, like... It's just important to be, like, I don't have an auto win here. But it's also not, you know, free for Marth to, to win this. Yeah. Because he's, he's getting pressured into the corner. And... Whether he can get this for free or not, like, oh, he got hit, now he's back to the ledge, like, oh, no, you know? Yep. Like, if, even if I hit his shield here, it's not that big of a deal for me. Yep, okay. And he can get, he can still get caught out of all of these, like, laser-type things that can catch him, and he can end up getting hit, he can end up getting pressured. It's not, it's just not super, like, oh, wow, I just get to full hop up and I'm free. Yeah, I would never I, I do that. <laughs> for me, my like least emphasized thing when they're in the corner is honestly the lasers, and just seeing you laser a short hops back down like shows I should definitely do that more. I'll do this like, a lot laser too, where I go kind of like, oops, uh, like I'll beat the nair. It's hard to time it because it's a replay, but I'll kind of beat the nair with stuff like that a lot. Yeah, and then he has a really hard time kind of getting past that. And so it's like if I'm kind of going for this punish on the nair, and then he's going for that, like that's definitely like a back air, you know? Yep. So yeah, there's there's sense. just ways there's ways around it, and he doesn't really have like a guaranteed escape. Like I'm not trying to tell you that the full hop out of the corner is not good. It is certainly good, but it's not like oh I'm in the corner I'll just full hop man I just get out for free every time you know. Mhm. Mm so yep. that's just something to keep in mind. Uh, yeah. keep in mind also that this matchup isn't solved so everything I'm telling you is like this is like currently what I think is kind of going on and I think it has merit but I'm not like everything I say is perfect you know like <laughs> yeah it's subject to change yeah sure. exactly but I think that hopefully some of the stuff we went through will uh, help you in the future in this matchup and uh, just keep me updated on uh if it helps, or if you have, like, a confusing clip, feel free to, like, send it to me, and I'll just, like, let you know, stuff like that. Awesome. Yeah, it's great. I think this was this was actually really helpful for me, and I appreciate it. Awesome, man. Sounds good. I'll All talk right. to you later. Bye. Yep, see you.